I hope you are doing well. I'm Jody and this is Geeking with Jody. Have you ever wondered what would happen if code wasn't a vertical scroll and instead it was a structured 2D shape? Here is Recto. I was struggling, challenging or enjoying it for a couple of days more, three or four days now. I was trying to write things in it and it was super cool. This is not a programming language for games. When we say Recto, a truly 2D language, we are not talking about the uh, result of our program. This is not a 2D programming engine. This is a programming language which is 2D. Normally, if you are thinking about any program, say a Python, if you are doing for blah blah, do this, if that, do this, then else, do this, I have a definition here and blah blah. Okay. If you have a look, this is in 2D, but actually it's not. Technically, it's written like this and you go here and it's like this and you are technically writing in only one direction. Because of iSticks, you break lines or in Python, you have to, in C, you don't have to, but at the end, you are reading it like this in one straight way. You may jump, go back, but again, you will go like this. This is not a 2D, this is different than a drawing. Recto is trying to answer back to this question. What would happen if we used two dimensions to code? This is an example. You may like it. But before going to it, talking about programming, I want to talk about our sponsor in this video, which is brilliant. Thanks to them. So lately I've been trying to make learning a daily habit. You know, just 10 or 15 minutes a day instead of waiting for some perfect time to study. And honestly, Brilliant has been a huge help with that. It's this platform full of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data, even AI. And the cool part, it's not just text or videos. You're actually doing stuff, solving puzzles, playing with visuals, really building intuition. I like that it keeps things bite-sized. You start small, get the basics down, and before you know it, you are tackling way more advanced problems. And because it's on your phone and computer, you can learn wherever, at your desk, or even just while waiting for coffee. For me, it even happens in the bus. If you are curious about data or programming, they've got some really fun courses. You'll work with real data sets like Airbnb or Spotify and actually learn to see trends and think like a data scientist or dive into programming from Python basics all the way to developing problem solving skills that make you think like a coder. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash jadi, that is J-A-D-I. Scan the QR code on a screen or click on the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring us. So I was talking about Recto, a programming language where nested rectangulars are the core syntax. Instead of writing code in lines, structures and logic are encoded with spatial layouts. Rectangulars mainly could be anything else, but the creator preferred this one, which is more practical, Masato Hagiwara. And the fun part is he's coming from a information background which is makes everything much much cooler he's into information engineering has books on this and his idea is amazing there is a proverb in programming they say every new programming language you learn should teach you to think in a different way and this is there this programming language doesn't claim that it's going to replace rust c Java, Python, whatever. Nowadays, many of the programming languages claim that, or at least their super hard fan base will claim that. 
Most of the times, the main programmer who's creating this don't tell this. But people who are much, much, much on a beginner level would claim that their beloved programming language is going to replace everything. It won't happen at this overnight. But here we are talking about a new way of thinking. You can see it here. It says, I create rectangulars here and we start from there. Why? Because up to now, all our programming language used to be one dimensional, just like our speaking, our sentences. Technically, you have something, even if you start from a painting, I'm trying to imitate Bob Ross. If I want to describe this, okay, this is a 2D art, if it's art. Uh, if I want to describe this, I have to serialize the whole thing with my words. I have to tell you there is a flower in front or a tree, I'm not sure, and there are mountains there and there is a river and river has this specific color and we have three mountains and flowers, blah, blah. I'm telling them in one dimension. And on the receiver end, if I've been super great, people might be able to reproduce it. This is the same thing that happens with the concept of serialization. But this serialization goes in only one direction. And this is how we communicate with each other. This is how we started programming, how we started writing novels. What happens if you add another direction? For me, the metaphor of novel compared with a painting works great. Painting is two-dimensional. When the artist is creating this painting, it's not important if they start with a flower or mountain or the river or sea. If it's Bob Ross, he can start from a happy bush. Nowadays, that I'm 45 years old, I can understand how this happy bush came from. Those days, I did. So, you have this, and you have one object in 2D. If I transmit it, and you start watching to it, you cannot say, okay, I will start from mountains, because you started drawing from mountains. This is a complete art in 2D. Uh, this professor is searching for the exact same concept. Uh, so he says, for example, in an object like this or an art like this or in a novel arrival when we have what they called logograms like this technically you are communicating an idea in 2d instead of using words to go in one direction which is scrollable in this programming language he's trying to do the same this is closer to our understanding of many of the concepts like matrices if you have this matrix in your programming language, in C, Python, whatever, uh, technically you can write it like this, but you are just trying to make it more beautiful. It's about aesthetics and not the exact functionality of a matrix. In the grammar of recto, you can have this rectangular identifier. So here I'm defining a rectangular, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and defining something in the middle. You can have spaces or tabs, so you can continue fighting about spaces over tabs. The answer is spaces is are better. You can have rows, the same concept with your 1D language. You can have columns. So you can define something like this. You can understand it now. There is a rectangular here. So this will get interpreted. You have a minus sign. So C minus D and you have plus sign on your larger rectangular. So technically what you are doing is you are saying C minus D plus A plus B. Okay. B and are in this rectangular and you have a plus sign here. So too easy. Here you can say, okay, I would prefer to write it in one line. Okay. But here you can see that something fun is starting to happen. You can define a dictionary like this, or you can define a set like this, 
the elements can be in any order or a real matrix. This is where fun starts to happen. You are defining a matrix as you define it in mathematics. And remember, still this is not solving an unsolved problem. This is a new approach to something. For me, I was trying to write some programs in it. We will see more about the syntax later in a few minutes. But I was trying to write Fibonacci series or the Pascal triangle. We call it Pascal Chayam triangle. We're trying to write this one and you see that you're starting to thinking deeply and deeply like a huge puzzle or a new idea in programming. Uh, the problem is when I was trying to write, there were no easy way to see how it would run. So I needed something to run. This guy amazingly created a project on GitHub. So you can go to M. Hagiwara and Recto give it a star. As you can see, it's new. He's working on it, but not enough stars or watching. It was in the news in many different places, but still, I believe, needs more attention. That's why I'm talking about it. See, we have a function. This is math multiplier. So from math, multiplying. Multiplying what and what? This rectangular which is a matrix with this, which is a matrix. Okay, so this is my current rectangular. So I have this, I have this, I have this with this function. So this is what is happening, easy. Multiplying two rectangulars in each other. And then checking for equality. So checking this with this. And if they are equal, you will get a true here. See, it is super cool. The project can parse and can interpret. So technically you can run your programs in Recto. He also created some thing in Colab, in Google Colab, so you can actually run this. If you open it, you have to run this one, okay. This is the whole thing which runs the program. So if you have this very, very nice programming skill, you can have another program in Recto Colab. It says, okay, this is my Recto program. Creates the root, then goes for AST. If you have ever written an interpreter, you know what is happening. Then it prints the AST and then runs it. I can remove this so you won't see the AST and root, so you can just see the result. This is a fizz buzz in colon. I will show you. Anyway, this is a function. You are defining a function. Very easy to understand. As soon as you get the concept, it's very easy to understand. Creates a function. So this is a rectangular creating a function called times. It gets A and B and does this rectangular. This is multiplying A and B. Very interesting. Or if you have a rectangular here, a block, you are running if. Okay, if. What is it comparing? It's comparing if it's equal zero. If this equals zero, this is a row like a rectangular. So the reminder of n, a modulus of n and two technically returns if it's even, if it's odd. And other things like 4. 4i four in this range do this rectangular. Okay, this is kind of like what we were doing with going to the new lines. But the idea is a new method of programming, a new method of thinking. And look at this one. He even created a rectopath where you can write your programs. You can import. It has some samples. This is a hello world. The cool part is if you go to FizzBuzz, his idea is you can zoom into this section only on this rectangular and understand this. Then zoom out and see what is going on. You don't need to scroll up and down. This is a classic FizzBuzz. Study it later by yourself and see how it works. But you can, if you write something here, you can export it. Here you have the Recto code. So you can go to Colab, 
replace the current code. Ow. Ah, oh, the fizz buzz was here already. So you can write this and run it. Or instead of this, you can go here, use another already available program, export it, it's here. So I can go here and say, I have this. Even, I understand. I've spent three days on this, trying to write different programs. I was feeling 50% being silly, 50% being genius. Try it yourself, it's very interesting. So, I, was, I wanted to say, even if you don't click with this, don't understand what is cool about it, and still searching for, oh, this, what, this doesn't solve a real life problem. Think about many, many cases that nothing was solving a real life problem at the moment. This is the expansion of thinking. But even if you feel like this, go through this in very interesting, amazingly beautiful parser, which only uses this much code, Python code, to parse and interpret this specific language. That will amaze you as a Python programmer. Anyway, this is the other one. So it writes, hello, recto. It is cool. Hope. Anyway, this was what I wanted to show you. And I was spending a few days on this. So wanted to share. Thank you, Mr. Masato, for this amazing work. Will help many people expand their thinking about programming. If they can program in 2D, they can zoom into part of their program, go back, zoom out. Let's see. And the beauty is you don't need to understand which part was written when. It's like a drawing. You have your drawing, you look at your drawing. You don't need to say, okay, this is the first part of the drawing, this is the last part. Anyway, it amused me. I wanted to share it with you guys. Thanks. Have fun, and we will continue having fun with 